Hey everyone, it is the third and final video of the Apollo 50th Anniversary LEGO Build Series. And for this video, we're going to be building the Apollo Lander set that LEGO specifically released for the anniversary. And I'm super excited for this one as well as I was with all the other ones because I'm a space geek. And also I'm super excited about this one because there's been a lot of buzz about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we're actually just going to jump right into unboxing and nulling out all of the pieces for this set. I'm actually going to continue doing the facts for you guys because I've been really enjoying it and it seems like a lot of you guys have been enjoying it too. So if you want to hear facts about Apollo 11, make sure to listen all the way through. Neil Armstrong had to land the Apollo 11 spacecraft manually because the system malfunctioned and tried to have them land in a crater filled with automobile-sized boulders. When they landed on the lunar surface, they only had 25 seconds of fuel left, any longer, and they would have needed to abort the mission. When the Apollo lander landed on the moon and Neil Armstrong was about to make his historic first step, he had to hop about 3.5 feet from the Apollo ladder onto the lunar surface. The actual quote that Neil Armstrong said when he took the first step onto the moon was, One small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. The flag that was placed on the moon was knocked down as the lunar module ascended. When Aldrin and Armstrong landed, they accidentally broke a necessary circuit breaker that was needed for them to get off the lunar surface. Luckily, they were able to replace it with a felt-tipped pen. The computer systems on the Apollo mission were less complex than the USB drives and toasters of today. astronauts had to fill out customs and declaration forms when they came back to the U.S., and they declared the moon rocks and dust that they brought back. Many things were left on the lunar surface other than the American flag. Armstrong and Aldrin left their backpacks, along with a gold olive branch shaped pin to represent peace, messages from 73 world leaders, a patch from the Apollo 1 mission that never launched and killed three U.S. astronauts in a training exercise, and medallions honoring Russian cosmonauts Vladimir Komarov and Yuri Gagarin. So we got the first part of the build done, which is the lunar surface and this is what the lander is going to go on and this looks pretty cool we even have a little american flag here since it was such a monumental feat for america we also have a tiny little astronaut here that we're going to be putting on at the end and so the next part is going to be us building the inside part of the bottom of the lander the astronauts couldn't get life insurance so they instead signed photos that their families could auction off in case it went wrong.
an estimated 600 million people tuned in to watch the Apollo 11 landing live on TV. Neil Armstrong brought a piece of wood and a piece of fabric from the Wright Brothers plane onto the mission with him. Buzz Aldrin's father, Edwin Aldrin, was actually friends with Old Wright, one of the Wright brothers. Even though many people say that the first word spoke on the moon was the eagle has landed, it was actually engine stop and contact light due to the fact that's what they were supposed to say with the official NASA procedure that was required. Aldrin and Armstrong only spent 21 hours and 36 minutes on the moon, out of a mission that was 195 hours and 18 minutes long from launch to splashdown. They collected 46 pounds of samples of moon rocks and dust. Aldrin became known as Dr. Rendezvous because he helped translate complex orbital mechanics into simplified flight plans for his colleagues. Almost all of the pictures from Apollo 11 feature Aldrin because Armstrong was the one who took most of the photos. There are only a few photos of Armstrong along with still frames that are taken from the video recording of the moon walk. Aldrin and Armstrong were scheduled for a nap when they landed on the moon, but they instead asked Mission Control if they could skip it and get onto the moon. Mission Control accepted, but they had to go to sleep right away after they got back, which they did for seven hours. NASA actually lost a ton of footage from the moon landing, exactly 11 whole tapes of footage. There was a mirror installed on the moon for something called the Lunar Laser Ranging Experiment, where we can shoot a laser from Earth and know exactly how far away the moon is according to how long it takes for the beam to make its way back to Earth. The place where Apollo 11 landed on the moon is known as the Sea of Tranquility. According to Aldrin and Armstrong, they could smell the moon dust when they took off their spacesuits, and it smelled like spent gunpowder and wet ash. Next up, there's going to be a lot of stickers that I'm going to be putting onto the second part of the lander. 
but I'm going to be using a specific technique that I actually found when I was watching Adam Savage's video on Tested of building this exact set. You, when I, With the other stickers, you probably saw me doing it before, and that is using tweezers. This is extremely helpful, especially if you get bubbles under your stickers. This keeps it so much smoother. So I'm going to be using this for all of the stickers in this set because of how helpful it is. So I'm not going to show you guys. So the first, one of the first stickers that we're going to be doing is over here. So it's going to be the United States sticker. You just kind of peel it up. Take it with the tweezers. Find about where you want to put it. About there. Put your finger there. Pull the tweezers away. And smooth it down. And it is perfectly smooth and it works so well. So I'm going to be doing this for the rest of the stickers. The astronauts wanted to call the lunar module and command module of the Apollo, Snow Cone, and Haystack, but were denied, and they are instead called Eagle and Columbia. And the second part of the lander is done, and there's some super cool parts about it, and let me show you. So you actually built the fuel tanks that went into the lander. The red tanks are the fuel and the white tanks are the oxidizer that was needed. There's also some flip out flaps, such as the thing that contains the mirror that they actually installed on the lunar surface. And then on the other side, a special camera that we'll actually get to later. But the next part that we're gonna be building is part three, which is the outer part of the bottom of the lander. they named the lander Eagle was in honor of the national bird, and Columbia was named after Columbiad, which was the gigantic cannon that launched the moonship in Jules Verne's novel From the Earth to the Moon. Other Apollo mission parts had cool names too. Apollo 9's command module is named Gumdrop because when it was shipped, it was wrapped in blue, making it look like a wrapped gumdrop, along with the lunar module named Spider due to its appearance. Apollo 16's command module is named Casper after the famous cartoon Casper the Friendly Ghost due to the crew's white suits, which looked shapeless on television. Apollo 10's command module and lunar module were called Charlie Brown and Snoopy. And it was called Snoopy because the lunar module was snooping around the moon on lower Earth orbit. Also, whenever there was a worker at NASA who did extraordinary work, they gave them a Snoopy pin. Due to a problem with the spacecraft's hydrogen gas filters, their drinking water was always a bit bubbly with carbonation. Michael Collin was the one to design the Apollo 11 patch, and him, Aldrin, and Armstrong wanted to keep their names off of it since there are so many people who made the mission possible. The code that 
helped the astronauts land on the moon was filled with jokes in 1960s references, such as file names like Burn Baby Burn and Pinball Game Buttons and Lights, and comments throughout it like Hello There and Goodbye Come Again Soon. Near the end of Aldrin's and Armstrong's time on the moon, an unmanned Soviet spacecraft, Luna 15, accidentally crashed into the moon's surface about 530 miles away. Aldrin and Armstrong had to be careful that they didn't lock the lunar module hatch because there was no outside handle. And part three of this amazing kit is done, and it's the entire bottom of the lander. And all of this was left on the moon, except of course for the astronaut. And all of this is still on the moon, except for the American flag. By now, it's probably disintegrated because of the harsh conditions on the lunar surface. Plus, it was a $9 flag from Sears. Also, when you look at the video, it's waving, which seems pretty weird, right? Well, it's actually because they engineered the pole that's on the outside and the top side of the flag to carry the kinetic energy of when they place it down so that it looks like the flag is waving. But that's also why it doesn't look like the normal wave of a flag. The next part that we're going to be building is part four, and it's the final part, and I'm super excited. It's going to be the top of the lander. So let's get building. Planting the American flag was one of the toughest jobs for them to do because it was assumed that the lunar surface would be soft, but it turned out to be hard rock with just a layer of dust on top of it. that it took about 400,000 scientists to make Apollo 11 possible. The Apollo 11 astronauts are on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but instead of a star, they have a moon. Most of the pilots on the entire Apollo mission were military pilots, but Armstrong was a civilian research pilot. Apollo 11 travels a total of 1,096,348 miles from liftoff to landing. That's equal to about 224 round trips between New York City and LA. The 
astronauts on Apollo 7 actually won an honorary Emmy Award. Their mission was the first one to have a live television transmission, where they gave a tour of the spacecraft, how they prepared meals in space, and of course a bunch of jokes to go with it. The spacesuits used on Apollo 11 were actually made by a bra making company called Playtex. It was chosen because it actually beat out other companies in the design competition. Eventually, the spacesuit division split from the company and renamed to ILC Dover. It is still a contractor of NASA's today. Second lunar landing, Apollo 12, launched during a brief lull in a thunderstorm. However, the rocket was struck by lightning two times during launch. On the second time, it actually wiped out many of the module's electrical systems. They were going to abort the mission until a young flight controller remembered a way to get around it. From there, the flight went smoothly. Apollo 15's crew left a piece of artwork on the moon called the Fallen Astronaut to memorialize those that died, and they placed it next to the plaque that listed the 14 American astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts that died. entire build is done and this looks so cool but i'm going to quickly clean up my table and then i'm going to give my full review of this awesome kit apollo 11 and all the missions that followed afterwards were so instrumental to what we have achieved in space and apollo 11 is one of the biggest events that happened in the past 50 years and that's why it's so cool that lego built this set specifically to memorialize this event. And there's a lot of cool things about this set that I want to show you guys. The first thing is the booklet. There's a lot of information in it, not only in the front, but also throughout the booklet while you're building the set. And one of the cool things that they have with the information is they actually give a diagram of the model, but also of the Apollo module itself, that you can actually learn all of the parts. There's also a bunch of cool things with the set. Some of the things that they have is that they actually have little hatches in the bottom of the lander. So in this first one, they have the camera. And this camera is the one that took the video of Neil Armstrong taking the first steps onto the moon. And that's really cool. One of the things that people say with the conspiracy theory is that if the moon landing ever happened, is that if Neil Armstrong was the first person on the moon, then who took the video? Well, Apollo did, because it was all automated when one of the astronauts pulled a string. On the other side is another hatch. And this contains the mirror that I actually talked about in one of my previous facts, which they installed on the moon. And one of the cool things with this mirror is that if you have a powerful enough laser at home and you know where it is on the moon, you can actually point it at the mirror and do the experiment yourself. And this is another hit to the conspiracy theory, because if you hit the laser anywhere else on the moon, you're not going to get the same reflection. So with the conspiracy theory, it is good to ask questions, but then you have to do research, like finding the, about, the, about the camera and who took the video. 
And then also doing experiments that you can do yourself, like with the mirror. Because that is good science, because you always should ask questions, but you always need to try to find the answer. There's other really cool things with this set. One of the things is that you can actually open up the top part of the module. Oh look, there's Buzz. And some cool things with the top part of the module is that it contains a bunch of things, like the hatch that they went through, some little levers that they use to control, some control pads, and even the, um, the window that they looked through when they were landing the module on the moon. There's also some other cool things with the set, too. These things on the side were actually parts of the module, and they were the reaction thrusters, so it used to keep it stable. And if you take it off the bottom part of the lander, you can see the engine that they use to take the ascent back up to the service module, which is right here. And then on the top is the hatch that they went through to get back into the command module. I would totally recommend this set. Not only is it pretty cool, but you can use it in multiple ways. You can play with it like the actual Apollo worked, or you can just have it around as a pretty cool sculpture. I would especially get it if you have a little scientist or a little dreamer in your life, because who knows, maybe you can inspire them, and in their future, they could be walking on another planet's moon. So remember to dream, design, and build. Thank you to everyone who watched all three of my videos. The Apollo program really shows what can happen when we all work together. And I'm really glad that LEGO built these sets to memorialize that entire event. And I really can't wait to see what happens in space exploration in the next 50 years.